Yeah, but I would say also like so grateful to be in a position where whatever I was doing before has carried me through. So the work ethic that I had before, the trust that I had in myself, the self-belief and the breaks that I've got, I was on some, you know, I was on a path of where I want to do this. I want to have a solo show. I need to go up a gear and start to have some financial security or payback. That was kind of my, 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 my goal, the way that I was working. I remember like in the early times of the pandemic just kind of thinking this is it you know I'm never gonna have a creative thought ever again <laughs> and, um, it was just nothing there was just nothing coming like oh no, like I was totally frozen hey you're hearing snippets from season two of the residence podcast supported by the University of Bristol, the University of the West of England, and The Watershed. In 2020, we released a series to help capture some of the source behind the double doors that lead into the wonderful world of the Pervasive Media Studio. And we're back with some more conversation and some more games. This is the Me, Myself, and Mini-Me episode. And I'm joined by Liz Clark and Navita Savundu, who offer some incredibly intuitive and intimate insights into working in the creative sector whilst raising children. We talk about how motherhood has appeared in their work, along with how prioritising themselves has helped them to balance the responsibility and their creative practice. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey, and welcome to Me, Myself and Mini-Me episode of The Residence Podcast. I'm your host, Will Taylor, and today I'm joined by Levita and Liz Clark. Really looking forward to getting into this conversation. Been looking forward to this one for a long time, I can't lie. I'm going to pass over the mic to Liz, if you'd like to introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, I'm Liz Clark, and thanks for having me here today, Will. I'm a live artist, theatre maker, uh, maker of performance, and also producer. And I have been at the PM Studios for, I'm not sure how long, like three, four years um, with that weird pandemic gap in the middle. Mm. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, working on um, lots of different projects. And I, I came to PM specifically to work on a... A particular project and stayed ever since of course hello yeah i'm levita um i'm an interdisciplinary artist and often work in the audio visual worlds i'm particularly interested in memory and migration that means i create installations which come out with sound smell visuals and and things that um evoke senses and memories around collective experiences um yeah so my midi residency has gone on for quite a long time at the pm <laughs> studio <laughs> obviously uh the pandemic and bringing a little one into the world has meant that my invitation has been extended and i'm very happy about that um so i, I really appreciate yeah being here and being able to sit and be still and be with you and, and talk through some of some of our ideas i suppose yeah Oh, amazing, amazing. I'm glad that they extended that invitation, man. I would have been out there on a the picket line, <laughs> on a placard. <laughs> <laughs> Just super stoked to have you both here. I've been aware of your work to varying capacities as well. And one of those people who actually... Like every time I go into the residence sort of web page, I'm always just like, oh, who's new? What are they doing? And oh my God, yeah, that's dope. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily like I've got any ideas to do work with them, but it's just nice to see what, what else is happening in the space. You know what I'm saying? Just in case any conversations for collaboration could arise in the future. I just wanted to sort of check in with you both about what it's been like thinking about creative work and production I guess in your varying fields over this really weird stopgap yeah I mean god it's it it's been 
so different for everyone, hasn't it? And um, I remember like in the early times of the pandemic, just kind of thinking, this is it. You know, I'm never going to have a creative thought ever again. And, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it was just nothing. There was just nothing coming. Like, oh, no, like I was totally frozen. And I saw people kind of, you know, start to produce, produce, produce and make stuff and like make amazing kind of hybrid works. And yeah, and this kind of launch, people were launching into like new forms and uh, which which was brilliant. And I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I was like, that's it, that's me done. And then um, I, d- I do remember sort of standing at my window and as we were talking before, before you started recording, Will, about that, about that rest period, about that fallow period in like the cycle of making and creation and you can kind of relate that to any part of life. But And then, uh, I, and then I thankfully I did have a creative thought and then I was off again, you know. But it has been so different for, for everyone and like you appreciate that it's, yeah not a universal experience yeah but um thank you for sharing that man it's, it's it's always really uh sort of like humbling in terms of my perspective to hear how other people have experienced the last couple of years you know what i'm saying because in the conversations i've had i haven't heard people refer to the frightening element of it as as much as as we should do we owe it to each other mm. actually um but yeah libido like mm. and and as for you as well it's really interesting to listen to liz talk about that worry i guess to an extent of like oh my god am i ever going to have a creative thought Mm. i guess and and something about the way you you described your journey Mm. through that gave Mm. me this feeling of renewal actually Mm. there's been a lot of rebirth and a lot of death in the last couple of years um and i've just felt like yo processing like processing we can't process we're in a state of an emergency so we can't even process Mm. the thing so it's like almost talking about something as if it's happened but we're not even it's like the you know trauma is the experience the experience of the event that never happened right and i feel like we're still psychologically physically not able to process and digest this so it's Mm. almost like we're ahead of ourselves by trying yeah. to articulate it and move past it and mm. i feel that on a on a on a cosmic level but also on a very like personal level day by day of like mm. how am i processing mm. so for me really the center point i mean out goes along with give literally giving birth to a child in 2020 mm. just a month before wow. the pandemic officially locked us down um, wow. there's also been like how do I survive this because my mm. child needs to survive I need to survive so also just centering like you know acts, the language that we've all been speaking of a lot like care but it being so real like if I don't mm. look after myself my physical self my spiritual self my mental self I will not be well and I will not Mm. be able to care for this child Mm. so I've really had to um really had to shift my center so production it's not about production um Mm. and something Liz said there around like the meth is just not fitting like I've never I haven't had a conversation Liz where I've heard Mm. that but that's how I feel there is so Come much on. lagging and like mm. time lapsing in projects that started before where the energy has shifted and still trying to keep that stuff going yeah. and going, why yeah, isn't this but, working? Yeah, and all of that and like, time, but the money doesn't regenerate, does it? The money doesn't regenerate. So you're still working <laughs> off the fee from two years yep. ago, wanting... Mm-hmm determined to like stay with a commitment and a focus to do because Mm -hmm. there's so much worth and love and care that have gone into the conception of projects and actually now having to clunk into something which is like well this actually needs to die to be reborn but i don't want it's not about also just giving it up yeah there needs to be a new formation it's the cycle so i appreciate you for just like wording it in that way because yeah like we all need to like kind of let go of what was and then deal with what is to help this new yeah. stuff flourish and, and, and come and you're through. doing that in a double way because you're doing that with your motherhood journey 
yeah and the pandemic stuff because where i found that my methods changed completely when i mm. had kids methods right of making yeah work. yeah forget about and, <laughs> yeah yeah and um, so you're kind of you're you're do, doing them both at the same time so yeah wow. but i would yeah. say also like so grateful to be in a position where whatever i was doing before has carried me through so the work ethic that I had before, the trust that I had in myself, the self-belief and the breaks that I got, I was on some, you know, I was on a path of where I want to do this. I want to have a solo show. I need to go up a gear and start to have some financial security or payback. That was kind of my, 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 my goal, the way that I was working. And I've been able to actually have a couple of years of R&D there's been one aspect of this kind of career work stuff that that has been working for me and that is the work that I put in before there's been momentum mm. Mm. I and guess I, I, uh, sorry sorry Levine, no no um, go on Will I was I was just like listening to you both speak I'm um, um, just like pretty much in awe you know like there's hella wisdom coming out of here and I've just been like I've been wanting to hear this for a long time so I'm I'm, I'm just gonna be I'm being real selfish right now <laughs> uh, you got the mothers on <laughs> yeah, yeah um there was something both of you in sharing your reflections on what has gone and how it's influenced where you see yourselves now I'm I'm getting a vibe of real centeredness actually, like real mm -hmm. grounding. And I and I was wondering like if you wouldn't mind sharing what, what you might have felt your anchors to have been over this period of time. Do you know what it's just been such deep transformation that for me it is ongoing transformation and having to let go of uh, things that are not serving me, that have not been serving me, and these lessons have been very painful very difficult um so the grounding i suppose is just coming back to an essence of who am i who what do i need to be well wellness um and for me on the day-to-day -day right now that means uh meditation and moving my body the, you know these huge external forces mm. these force majeure moments in our lives have been so in transit so changeable so out of control mm. i have had to go within <laughs> in a very yeah. deep way go within what is in here everything i need is within so how do i find the roots here because all this shit is constant it always has been this way it's always going to be this way yeah. so how do i stand like a tree and also my branches well, and yeah. branches and leaves sway and move with the storms mm. and it's been you know uh, absolutely points of um total feeling like i'm breaking and breaking open <sighs> And having breakthroughs and, and good days and bad days. But that is, I've just had to go so in. Yeah. Hey, wow, wow, thank you for sharing that, man. That was real. That's amazing to hear you say that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's so, so true. And amazing to hear you talk about the sea, because the sea is mine <laughs> as well. Like, I just <laughs> need to be in it, on it, near it, by it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's that elemental kind of, yeah. Mm. Mm. recognizing and if i can't get to the sea i just need to be outside you know i need yeah. to be moving in the nature body. Moving and, the, it, and yeah. it really helps and remembering that Being that really, really helps and, <sighs> and i think for me being in my mid 40s <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you just uh, it's amazing you don't put up with any shit yes, <laughs> you know what i've been looking oh, I am looking to the 40s like that. I'm so happy to hear you say this. Oh, like, well, most of the shit. Most of the shit. You can just, like, forget. Oh, it's like, yeah, here I am. This is what I do. I've been doing it for a long time now. I know, you know, I know I, I know myself more. I know where I am, where I'm coming from, you know. It, there's, a, there's a certain knowing, isn't there? And I remember, like, when I, when I was pregnant with my first child and I just knew that in order for me to be happy and like you were saying for, you, for me my, me to be well and to kind of support this new person mm. I needed to make big big changes in the way that I worked in the way that I lived and mm. and at the time I was working for a 
for an employer and I'm just like that's just not going to work for us anymore mm. and we need to do it differently and and I think it's just listening to those and, and living by those is courage you have a new yeah. child and you're saying I, I don't yeah. want to be employed by this person that's going to give me money like consistent money yeah. Like, yeah. that is courageous right there yeah yeah, but also it's all with, knowing. Yeah. yeah, with with the art making and and the parenting, and and we were saying about how they're inter intermeshed, interweaved, and feeding each other, and that's always it, that has always had to have been how it how it is for me. You can't, mm-hmm. I can't compartmentalize. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. it's and it's cha- chaotic and it's <laughs> difficult, <laughs> but yeah. that's that's the way, that's the way that I'm rolling at the moment. So. Yeah, I love that. I I'm, I'm, I can't I can't like I don't want to be disrespectful and try to say that I'm speaking from the same pers- perspective. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, very clearly, a uh, uh, millennial man with like no children of his own. Um, so we were saying before we started recording how like I've had uh, an experience as being a code switcher from the moment my siblings were born. I've been mm. trying to translate the wisdom, concern, fear of uh, first generation like settlers from Ghana to millennial generation growing up who sometimes feel hard done by, you know, when when parents ex- express their sort of, um, their concerns around certain things, you know what I'm saying, around safety, this and that, and, and you just want to go out there and play and you're like, oh my God, that's a really steep hill. I've just got a new bike. I haven't ridden it before, but I'm going down that one. And it's like, dude, like, we, we didn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and for me, there's something really significant in what I try to model now about not splitting myself up. Just just going off of what you said, Liz, about not compartmentalizing myself and ensuring that the partners that I work with on projects get to experience the edges, like the different shades of me as, as, as well as the sort of person who left the first impression. And I was, I was just wondering for you both, like, you said that your methods changed uh, uh, when you had your first child. Um, you said that your methods changed again in the advent of, I love the term force majeure, Levita. Mm. That's, that's when I, when I noticed it was in a contract. Mm. For the, I was oh. reading through a contract in the middle of the pandemic and I went, force majeure, what on earth is this? Mm. Yeah. Buzz, yeah, that's so this. true, isn't it? It was in the contract I was signing, and I was saying, yeah. "Oh wow, okay, this stuff yeah. we're covered." Like people are thinking yeah. about acts of God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. I was just like wondering about how, since your first child, and over the last couple of years, how it's been for you to bring motherhood into into your work. I mean, it's a massive, massive question. We could be here for days talking yeah. about that. Um, <sighs> Yeah, like everything, it's the element of practicality, but also systemic. It was a radical act for me. The first time that I turned up to a theatre conference with my baby on my chest, you know, in a carrier. And for me to do that, I was knackered. I'd had no sleep, (laughs) like... You know, I was breastfeeding, so it was like mm-hmm. pa- you know painful, and and I uh, had lost my confidence, and you know from being, I had you know that fear that oh gosh I'm I'm I've disappeared I'm disappearing, and but for me to turn up but with with him, um, felt felt really important to be seen, to as you said will to, be. To have those edges visible as an artist, as a as a practitioner, because it's it's fucking difficult. You know, there's so many barriers, and and they're not they're not just physical. Um, and I never thought I would be a person who made work about the motherhood experience, or but it is kind of it has it has obviously filtered in, and then I and I have made pieces of work about that. Um, about that visibility and about that about identity a lot of my work is around identity visibility and um expectations and all of the layers that are just mm-hmm. put mm-hmm. upon 
put upon you in that in that position oh amazing i'm glad i'm glad that that's sort of where it took you do you know what i'm saying mm. like, at, at this point looking back at it or in the middle of whatever work you're doing now um yeah i don't know there's a real sense of contentment like content in me like right now i'm just like contentedness content i'm content i don't know what i'm trying to say <laughs> but i'm trying to make sure it doesn't sound like contempt do you know oh, what I'm, <laughs> I'm just bitter man i'm so angry you did that and another thing <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my that's jokes yeah, um content yeah but yeah levita how about mm-hmm. how about you like is is that is that happening yeah, for you like it, and and like even if it's not there's no expectation for you to be like oh yeah it is do you know what i'm saying it's, the journeys are different no like i said around processing like there's been such big changes and um and i'm 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 sitting sitting in the transformation ongoing mm. uh day by day and a big i mean you know a big part of me when i was pregnant i was opening uh, my first solo show which was called quantum ghost which was mm. looking at my um British, specifically Cornish heritage and Namibian heritage and the loss of my father when I was, it must have been three, which was around the independence of Namibia, which was 1990. And he oh, disappeared. Wow. He went back to Namibia to return for independence because all Namibians outside of Namibia who were in exile were called back. And then he kind of became this ghost in my life because he disappeared. So this missing figure, it was me kind of working through that I'm at an age where I need to work through this. This is what I need to speak to in the show. And then I found out I was pregnant and um, it became so physically represented, this growth, this manifestation, this catharsis, this lament, and then giving birth in the show kind of opening. And and um, I, I realised I created this kind of womb, this red dark room that you walk into it's this womb and I felt like I I I worked through something huge with that show and I put it out there and I healed something and then you know I gave birth and and now with my child who is becoming two and going from being in a in a a a co-parenting situation with his father who was in this country and and now I'm the lead parent there's such a big transition that, that now even my perspective on what it means to parent in this position with, with such, a, such an extreme uh, lack of free time on, on my day to day to be able to work, practi- like I can only work when he sleeps right now. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, there's so many huge changes that I already knew I was going to have maternity leave, as you do. I already knew... I wanted to have a break from showing, from producing, from being visible, actually. I wanted to, as I was saying, like my Frank Ocean moment, I'll drop an album in a couple of years. (laughs) I dropped one album, boom, it was the bomb, it was wicked, it did everything I wanted to. We're really proud, let's like drop out for a minute, let me centre raising this child, right? So (laughs) I'm still in that like little period of like the second album's coming and that's all good. Um, and for me, uh, the stuff around making work is it's it's not been making work. It's been thinking about work. It's been being in my body. It's been wondering about energetic work. It's been very practically in a in an experienced way. Like what are my resources? And it is right now as an able able body person walking and moving through space with my child. So I've been having you know when I was in Namibia. I was collecting things off the ground, seeds, things that had fallen, I guess, and thinking how can this become something in the future, recording sounds, going out with my phone with sound recorders. So I'm collecting, I'm gathering, I'm feeling the environment, um, not knowing where that will go, and also really embarking on, on, on therapy. So having continuous, ongoing speaking therapy having reiki having reflexology and wondering about energetic work wondering how i can give this and share this at some point 
but knowing that right now my resources resources all need to go in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Everything that's so needs wise. to come in. Yeah. So that's where I'm at with 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 making. It's it's such an embodied and experienced process rather than one that's like totally not going into the studio. I'm not about a studio right now. Yeah. Do you know what? It's 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 really fascinating you say that because um again like trying to understand the sort of work that I'm doing and where my sort of personal perspective leaks in and there's a central point where the things I want for the world are the same as the things that I want for the work that I'm doing as well. And a lot of that is centered around like decolonizing, critically looking at systemic patterns so you, they can be identified, but also recognizing that once they've been identified with that sort of Western critical gaze, it's it's respecting the non-Western sort of spiritual gut feeling mm -hmm. that I have. And there's something around matriarchy for me that I'm trying to make sense of. I don't get it. I can't say I get yeah. it. But it's like the change that the industry needs, the change yeah. that the sector needs, mm -hmm. like, requires a real, like, uprooting of, like, patriarchal ideas and ideologies because within patriarchy there ain't space to sort of say actually let me resource myself like yeah. in in a progressive holistic way do you know what i'm <laughs> saying it's like everyone i'm talking up everyone i'm hearing talk about the same kind of stuff you're you're mentioning yeah. today are all women do you see what i'm saying and, and I'm, I'm finding my position in that knowing that that is what i want uh, for the sector and, and for society at large. Real fascinating place to be. And I was, I was wondering, again, like for you both, like um, Liz, like do you find yourself trying to sort of do a little bit of activism for that kind of stuff in, in any sort of slightly, in a slightly weird, like off script <laughs> way? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, is that... I, think, I think you've got to just be doing what you do. Like, doing it being the example like being an example you know we have no blueprint on this and um there but there are people doing doing it differently and 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 yeah take hope and take courage from that but absolutely i hear exactly what you're saying i mean yeah when i made a show in collaboration with my son a few years ago we wrote a manifesto called um, No Pantomime Hierarchies. Yes. <laughs> and that was referring to making work with and for kids and also adults that um, that wasn't kind of, you know, when you go to a pantomime like or, or like a show, like a family show and it is like one one meaning for the kids and like, and like a slightly like risque, mm. like other kind of, that's, I'm doing this like going over my head uh, <laughs> over the kids heads and it's like we don't want to do it like that and mm -hmm. want, we need it to be level mm -hmm. um, and also whilst we're at it I'm working with my son so we need you know the pay needs to be enough for us to have like to, proper accommodation and we need a separate like um, being space to, to, to be and like he needs we need this and I found, I thought, isn't that interesting? I'm able to advocate that when it's mm. another human, like my small human. Um, and then <laughs> I started to bring that back into my own practice. Like, what would it be like if you kind of showed yourself that nurturing as well? So I think, yeah, it's that. Everything feeding each other. Is, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. So I, I think in answer to your question about how, how I might do that advocating differently i think it's it's things like that trying yeah. to bring those things sideways around about <laughs> into the yeah. practice and just to be visible be visible doing it i love that um mm -hmm. i'm so here for it man thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that Liz. and mm -hmm. levita any thoughts on, on that as well any reflections uh, for you yeah that was just really beautiful i loved that collaboration <laughs> with with your child um what well, yeah, what wonderful insight as well. And to think, you know, like the metaphor of like the inner child, you know, that mm. like you're saying, you're learning, you're learning from your child and going, what would happen if I actually treated myself a little bit like walk like the walk, what yeah. insight? <laughs> like we are the te we are the you know we mm. are the students, right? Um, mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I I don't know. I, I suppose I keep thinking about gardens like you've yes. touched on and mm. rhizomes yeah. and reading about different ways of kind of different poetics around gardens and and what are we growing here and it feels like such a feminist approach it feels so like divinely feminine mm. and all of the works that have nourished me and the trajectory that I feel like I'm on that's correct is so much around like collective growth mm. and it feels like such um it feels in such an opposition to, you know, the the single, the linear, the monolith that perhaps feels very Western, very patriarch, patriarchal, very within the white supremacist structures that we speak about. And the alternative then is this, this body of, um, yeah, of, of many, of poly, of, of multiples. And and in the spirit and the language that you've speaking of, spoken about of... Um, I don't know, I think you said Will around around and around showing showing like your full self or was it Liz yeah. like not not having to just come with like the one project or the one idea but mm. you're working on many things, not compartmentalizing. Yeah. And again that feels like an act in resistance in another way, an alternative way that brings the wholeness of us into the room mm. as well as saying I am me because of others as well. And for me, where the generative work, where the interesting stuff, where the future, the life-giving, life-affirming stuff is this collective work with others and being held, being vulnerable, speaking like we're speaking. And and it's, you know, it's it's not... The empire is falling. <laughs> it has fallen. <laughs> the bloody... Yeah. We're in these shells, these shacks are still propping up this old beastly thing and going, it's still alive! <laughs> like I was fucking dead, man. Like it's a ghost. Hopefully it's not even a ghost. It's something. It's a fossil. And mm. and in the meanwhile, you know, you can see the greenery. You can you can see where we actually are and what is growing. And it is such it's it's such a such a different way. Um, and we're still traversing them all, aren't we? Like I'm still yeah. within the other houses. I'm still in and around in some way in spirit in the institutions in in the fallen empire because i'm in england i'm here i'm still mm. going to the parent of the arts council and saying mm. you know can i have my money please mum and dad um <laughs> whilst going i'm over here with these beautiful um women and people that are doing this collective work in projects that that is about something else and our bodies are our house so i don't know like yeah. that's I feel like there's something there that's um, that's that feels different, but mm -hmm. I still feel like I'm in all the houses in a way. Yeah. yeah, you can tell I was totally immersed in what our guests had to share with us. Levita's reflection on the importance of her well-being is something that has really stayed with me. I, for one, really struggle to trust my intuition at times. I also really felt the intimacy in Liz sharing her account of bringing her child to a theatre production with her for the first time and all the things that situation brought up for her. Next, we got the moral quandary section, our little game where we explore the little cheeky monkey on us all waiting to be called into the limelight. So the way this works is that we have four topics from our guests to choose from. They'll read out a question from the topic of choice and offer their answer. A group can deliberate or offer their own answers too. We've also added a wildcard to this series, so they can answer a question not immediately related to the topics we provided. There are no right or wrong answers, or winners, or losers, just masters of mayhem. Hit us up on social media to share some of your responses to the questions asked. Levita is up first, and picked a dilemma from the culture category. Let's go. Right. Do you want me to read this? Yes, please. You have access to big data and can influence advertising patterns to all online users. What kind of messaging would you push? What do you feel like people need to hear? Ooh. <laughs> well, do you know what's funny? I have I quit all social media when I was pregnant. 
So I mm. feel like out of a lot of people, I'm really like under a rock. So let's 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 be honest. Um, let's go with some nice kind of style um, affirmation cards, which I know is like really oh. on point for everyone anyway. And lots of people are doing that online. So let's mm. go with some nice positive mantras. Um, you can do this. You oh. got this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And um, everything you need is within you. Um, yeah, again. take your shoes off, feel the ground, <laughs> take a breath. You know, I'm gonna go with all that, all that stuff, all that stuff off the top of my head. Yeah, love yeah, that, yeah. love that. Isn't that wouldn't that <laughs> be then, so nice? But, but then I don't know. But then you say that, and then in the world of advertising, it it just becomes like a coke advert. So mm-hmm. all of this stuff I'm putting out there is going to be monetized, which it probably already is because also the wellness market is is a beast. Mm. Um, so I don't know. It's a tricky one, Will. It's a tricky one. <laughs> do I even want the advertising? Do I even want to be in the advertising patterns? I don't know that I do. Yeah. I don't know that I do, actually. I don't know that I do. I feel like maybe that's, that, that's a part of the problem right there. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna stop Black there, guys. Spaces. Mm. I'm gonna stop there. That's that's my that's my brain dump. Yo, that's dope. That's dope, man. That's I didn't think about that. The sort of like yeah. taking up the space mm. for like instead of allowing the space for the person to yeah. sort of explore them things for themselves. As as in terms of the advertising thing, is that mm. is that did I read that right? Is that what I'm hearing? I'm not adding any more to this, Will. Ah, I love that! <laughs> <laughs> Don't get drawn back in. Yeah. Like it. Yes. <laughs> oh, my G. Yeah. So I... oh, oh. Can I just share a little anecdote since we are talking about the um, the mini-me's? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, my my boy, my eldest, he's like a real kind of real pacifist, really like um like a gentle soul and he really hates advertising and he just can't bear it and he's like really on it like I can't bear it. And like my little one came into the world and she's fighting and fighting against everything that her big brother stood for, obviously. Yeah. And um, when 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 she was quite little, um you know, she had the question, like, oh, what do you want to be when uh, you grow up? And she's like, because she knew Felix had this thing about advertising everywhere. And she goes, adverts! I want to do adverts! <laughs> <laughs> she wants to be, she wanted to be in advertising just to piss her brother off. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Hey, that that is... Yeah, man, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I hate everything you stand for. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe we should just put like, default. Get, don't look at me. The average should be yeah. don't look at me. Get off. Leave me there. Get away. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> Amazing. All right, sweet. Let's let's roll. Liz, how are you feeling? Tech economy, culture, education or wildcard? Well, it's gotta be education where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, let's go for it. Education. What? <laughs> okay. Would you rather be able to learn everything through reading and have total mastery of it, or take a pill that gave you the skill you wanted but you never enjoyed that skill again? Oh my God! Well, that's a no-brainer for me because I just <laughs> I love I love the books. Yeah. Oh, just give me the books. Give me the smell of the books. Give me the feel <laughs> of the books. Just give me the books. Um. Yeah, learning is. I mean, we'd, that's what I'm doing all the time, mm. <laughs> and um, and have total mastery of it. I'm not even sure. Like, who was it that said if there's a job worth doing, it's worth doing badly? And I love that because we're all <laughs> we're all we're all learning through our, through mistakes, and um, you can. Uh, yeah. To say that you're a total master of something is pretty arrogant, I think. Um, you ain't lying. Yeah, so that's, yes, that's it for me. Okay, amazing. We are we are back with the VR. What topic? What oh, topic are we no. feeling? How many questions?
questions are we going to do, Will? I feel like I'm going to... Nope, come on, I can do this. Uh, let's go with tech, because I am really... That's that's my that's probably a weakness out of the three four. So let's try let's try tech. That's my okay. curveball there. Okay, here we go. Right, let's go sci-fi. You can Ooh, now nice, get, good question. Yeah, you can now get a microchip installed into your brain that will give you the perfect memory, recording every interaction, every minute of your day. Would you do it? I'll repeat that again. You can now get a microchip installed into your brain that will give you the perfect memory, recording every interaction, every minute of your day. Would you do it? Absolutely not. Yeah. Record and and then what? Play back. I suppose it it archives it for you. Do you know what I'm saying? You can you can tap back into it. No man, because I just think you know like memory is much more abstract than that it's it's mm. so much more than just like a recording and the way that we experience it we can't even we don't even have a grasp on it so i think as soon as it becomes contained and literal and we can access it in that way i just i just think something will be lost and it will become something else that probably becomes anxiety inducing uh, probably becomes yeah. really productive and uh-huh. no nah, I don't know what is is it? I think also we drop stuff that we don't need anymore and we we lose stuff and we change and and there's certain stuff that we we play that isn't good I don't I just I just think don't don't play games like that Mm-mm. yeah don't, don't be playing games like that no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 leave it alone I don't leave play it those alone. games no I, here I am I'm on this journey not gonna play that game nope uh, that, that's real interesting reflection man I hadn't thought about sort of um that thing of almost trying to produce your memories in it do you know what I mean like it's Black Mirror stuff. We've all watched those episodes. You know, <laughs> you'll, you'll be on a key ring and you'll be AI and that'll be your eternal torture. Don't take the pill. And it'll all be sold to the corporates. <laughs> <laughs> just take your lot and just like this human experience. Enjoy your ride, man. Mm. Mm, no, man. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, Liz, how you feeling? Oh. Well, there's only one left, isn't there? The economy. The economy. <laughs> what sci-fi have you been reading to get these <laughs> questions? Well, so the year is 2099, and humans now pay for everything with time. You figured out a way to get things for free, but time stops for five days for everyone else. Do you use it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm putting myself into this weird dystopian world. Um, uh, Time stops for five days for everybody else. I mean, I, I, I can't even begin to. There's so many, there's so many questions there to try and answer. <laughs> um, Feel free to ask them as well, man. If you got, if you okay. got Let's design this dystopia together. Figured out a way to get things for free, not just like one thing for free, but like everything for free. Yeah. Uh, if you want it that badly. Stops, time stops for everyone else. Well, I think. Yeah. Oh God. And it, it goes back to what Lovita was saying about the uh, the culture of individualism, isn't it, versus the the collective. And, oh, in my version of the future, I would really hope that it goes towards that collective and not to those individual, like, isolated bubbles that we're... Mm. That, yeah. Um, more, more collaboration, more community living, more... You know, and I keep bringing it back to the family again, but it's like less isolation in that, you know, from the pandemic, what the the families that have been isolated, I can only imagine what it's like to bring a small person into the world during the pandemic and 
and and be forced into those even more isolated than we were before. So I I don't even want to think about that <laughs> um, that version of of a reality that that question has posed. Um, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, because I would hope that we'd still have those kinds of hopes and ambitions. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. That was, that was so, <laughs> so you sweet. don't want to be rich and alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's that's the that's the because uh, the thing is as well, I was writing it and I was just like, it's five days too long. But if I made yeah. it any shorter, I was just like, oh, I, you know, what I'm if they were, I suppose if they were frozen and they had no idea about it, but hey, well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> this is it, and maybe you could have all the stuff and then give it to the your mates when they come back. Yeah. Uh, uh, that switched it up for me. Way to to yeah, buck that system. Mm. Get your haul. Yeah. Be like, hi guys, here's our lot. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna like gently move us over that question. Um, and th- how do we feel about one more round? One more round of that. Come on then. Yeah. Go on then. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lavio, what what topic would you like to pick? There's more um, questions in all of them, by the way, as well. Uh, let's go with economy again. Economy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. We've just got to be like one minute answers now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Compliments and positivity have replaced money. Would you survive? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> How much should we do in these transactions? How yeah. authentic and sincere? Oh, because then, oh God. then it becomes like, it could become toxic positivity which is where we're going towards in certain you know like Mm. don't feel bad don't talk about Mm. negative feelings which is not the human experience so we could end up down a hyper hyper positive route of like everything all the time like you look good you look great i'm imagining it's like american american (laughs) robotic weird like i don't know virtual space um (laughs) Would you survive? I would survive because I'm a survivor. Me and the cockroaches are going to be here. Um, Yeah, yeah. I'm from a long line of survivors, so I know how to do that. Um, Compliments and positivity. Maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe that opens up uh, a different way of exchanging so it wouldn't at all be in the way that we use money now. Mm. So maybe in another Mm. vein, it would, it would, the transaction of that is so different and so conversive maybe, or I don't know what technologies we'd be using, but perhaps it, perhaps it would just be so different that, that it wouldn't be at the pace that yeah. we use money at now. And it wouldn't, maybe it wouldn't be as often and as pervasive. I don't know, mm. but I would, yeah. I would survive. I just think the whole game would be different. Mm. The whole game would be different. Um, and how long before like another kind of under currency came or like you know, yeah. a whole different language of like you know in the Victorian era where they had like they spoke is it floriography and they used flowers to symbolize different meanings oh, so wow. <laughs> we might um, develop some something along those lines yeah I don't know this, I mean there's something beautiful in 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 um in that kind of higher way of being being permeating Mm -hmm. i wonder what that would do you know everything is kind of um what's the word kind of contagion isn't it 
So mm. anyway, yeah, yeah. Let me let me leave that there. Interesting thought, Will. Interesting thought, but I, I That's need to survive. Glad I'm glad to hear that we survivors out here. We survivors out here. <laughs> but we want to thrive. Um, we don't want to just survive. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Hello. yeah. yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, just just conscious of time, so I'm gonna bring it bring it to a close. I'll just like say something to bring it to a close. If you're both alright with that, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, yo, thank you so much to the two of you, Levita and Liz, for joining us on this episode, man. I've had such a wonderful experience actually just like following wherever the two of you have taken this conversation and i'm so deeply deeply appreciative man um yeah i'll i'll signpost everyone to your stuff in a sort of like b-roll thing as well but i just want to say thank you both so much for joining us um and good luck with your future ventures you know the change the meditation just rolling with it rolling with the punches and, and riding the wave so thank you Thank you, Will. Aww. Thank you, Liz. Thanks. It's been really good Thank to be here. Thank you both. Yeah, it's been great. Actually, amazing. I don't know if you could experience it as listeners, but there was a real sense of calm during that episode. Levita and Liz were so generous and it made the conversation flow so easily. Uh, my deepest gratitude to both of them for trusting me during that episode. For our listeners, feel free to head to the Pervasive Media Studio website or come through and learn more at Lunchtime Talk every Friday at 1pm. As always, a massive thanks to The Watershed, the University of Bristol and the University of the West of England for supporting the project and the Pervasive Media Studio exec team as well. I want to take a moment to show some love to Joe Kimber. They were instrumental in us being able to get the second series off the ground, so much love Joe. Our beautiful artwork was created by Jazz Thompson and the music designed by Joe Hill. Remember to check us out on social media to share some of your responses. And tune in next time as we speak to some more of our beautiful community.